Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Triple Fact. Yes, I changed uh, the name of the spelling uh, or the hashtag. Triple Fact stands for Finally Fastings, Frequently Asked Questions. And uh, if you're not aware of how this works, this is a segment where I go through people's questions, whether it be on YouTube or on Instagram or Reddit. And uh, these are ones that are asked quite often and I'll try to answer them as thoroughly as I can. In episode one, I talked about supplementation. If you haven't had a chance to see it, I'll throw a card up, uh, whatever way the card gets put up. And uh, I talked about the four supplements, the four supplements that I take, um, how much I take, when I take it, and how often I take it. And I go a little more in depth as well, so feel free to check it out if you haven't done so already. But for episode two, I wanna talk about the mind, uh, the mentality of fasting, how to get through that kind of mentality. And this is actually something I plan to, again, further segment in the future. But for now, I want to talk about it because I feel like this is something that a lot of people struggle with, is uh, getting over that hump when it comes to fasting. And it is actually a video that I put out when I first started, but I really want to like dig into some of the comments here because as, as much as I want to help everybody out individually, I know that I'm not going to have the time to do so, but, um, you know, reading a couple of these like latest comments, I just feel like some people are struggling and I want to see if I can help you guys out, you know, as much as I can. So I'm going to answer all of these questions, but before I do, I want to read through them just so you guys you know, get a scope of what people are wondering or, you know, where their mind is at here. So uh, one of the most common ones I get is from Ilya Business Advice that says, I've been trying to do 90 hour fasts, but always seem to break around hour 60 to 66 due to hunger. Any tips? And that's a common question that they can't get over, you know, certain you know, our number, whatever it is. Uh, but again, I will get back to it. Just, I want to go through the rest of these questions. There's a point I'm trying to make here. Um, Ava Jackson says, when I fasted last year, I really struggled with feeling empty while fasting. How do you push past that empty feeling? How do you stay motivated? And then uh, Ivan Agnajanovich, hopefully I said that right, Ivan uh, Agnajanovich. If I didn't, please correct me. Uh, do you find it hard to get over the whole quote ritual ritual of eating? Like even when I'm not physically hungry, if a thought pops into my head of how nice it would be to cook dinner with my girlfriend or take her out to a restaurant and every pleasant memory related to those things starts coming back to me, all tastes of the awesome food, the positive associations with the whole thing. How does one overcome that without feeling a bit depressed for denying yourself that mood for that day? That's that's a very deep question there, but it also rings similarly to the one that I just read from Ava that talks about that empty feeling. And I don't know if Ava means empty in that kind of way or just empty in general, but the last question I have here, well, it's not even a question, it's, it's a comment, it was from Ashley A who says, seeing someone successful and still in the process makes me feel not so alone in this mind game. And uh, I think I think that that's the point I was trying to make is a lot of it is a mind game, whether whether you want to believe that or not. Sometimes the hunger that we have, sometimes that feeling of emptiness or sometimes uh, feeling depressed because you can't eat with others or, you know, you want to do something nice, um, but you're trying to stick to your fast. Some of that is a mind game. And your mind will play as many tricks as possible to get you to break that fast. I, I don't know if it's just the human in us, uh, our survival to eat, but I will tell you this. If you have excess body fat on you, you don't have to break your fast. You don't. I, I understand um, social events, social gatherings, uh, there, there is a happiness associated with food. I mean, I grew up that way. Think about birthday parties with cake and pizza and all the great things that, you know, we, we 
again, associate through food. It, it's tough. It's something that I've dealt with for decades, something that I have never been able to get a hold of until recently. So if we go back to Ilya Business Advice's question that he's been trying to do 90 hour fast, but always seems to break around hour 60 to 66 due to hunger. Um, and he, he's asking about tips. Let me kind of put it in this sense first. If if you're always breaking around the 60 to 66 hour time frame, it, it could be a hormonal thing. You know, there is that hormone and I think it's um, ghrelin. That's like the hunger hormone. And uh, when that hormone hits, it's it's your body telling you it's time to eat. And sometimes that hormone hits around the same time frame, either every day. I don't know if it's every couple of days, but uh, I think the one thing to keep in mind is that that hormone uh, will come in waves. And you should know this because if you're if you're fasting for that long, that wave of hunger will hit and then it'll go away and then it'll come back and hit again and it'll go away. I think the one thing that I've seen or read about is that wave of hunger, which might start out high at the beginning, especially when you are not used to fasting, will lower itself over time. Now, I don't know if 90 hours is your set goal or if you're just trying to do 90 because, um, you know, I'm doing 90, but the fact is maybe maybe 90 isn't really what you need to get at. Um, it also depends, though, on, on how much you eat. I mean, if you are trying to do 90 because you're trying to, like, lose that weight and you want to just hit that number, like, you know, by all means, go for it, especially if you feel uh, healthy enough. And and I guess, I guess that's where I need to go with this as well is if you know that it's just hunger and you're not feeling weak and you're not feeling nauseous and you don't have headaches... And uh, if, if it's just hunger, like you just got to fight through it. The one thing I've talked about before is that um, fasting isn't always easy. Uh, it's gotten easy over time. It's gotten easier over time for me. But uh, for a lot of people who are just starting out, because I was in that same boat too, it, it isn't always easy. And um, the one thing I've also said is life isn't easy. And sometimes we have to be a little uh, uncomfortable to, you know, have growth. And, and I know that might sound like tough love, but it, it's something that I fight through every day. Because I would be lying to you if there are days after a refeed where 24 hours after I'm starving and all I want to do is eat. But I let that, you know, wave of hunger pass. Here's the thing is I, I've been doing 90 hour fast now, right? For over two months. And I think out of those two months, I think two or three, I have done, I went past 90 and I did 115 hours. I added an extra day. Those were the toughest ones for me because I am just so accustomed to eating around that time. Just like Ilya, you're probably accustomed to eating now after 60 to 66 hours. And um, I mean... So as far as just fighting through that hunger, which again, if you're feeling healthy, if you're feeling fine and it's just a hunger thing, then you might just need to ride that wave. But some other tips, sometimes like a nap works, right? If I'm really feeling hungry, I'll take a nap. Um, I mean, you could go for a walk, but sometimes that doesn't help. Uh, a shower actually isn't bad either. And then the last thing, which might be, you know, a last resort is try to have uh, something to drink that's carbonated. So like a LaCroix or like a seltzer water or if it comes down to it. And I'm not saying that you need to do this, but it's something that I do if I'm struggling is I'll have a Diet Coke. And sometimes it's just as simple as that that'll let that hunger pass. Okay, so... Uh, Ava Jackson, again, when I fasted last year, I really struggled with feeling empty while fasting. How do you push past that empty feeling and how do you stay motivated? Um, this is this is a really good question. When, when you say feeling empty, I, I have to question, are you saying feeling empty because you just haven't eaten? 
Because if that's the feeling and you're just trying to feel full, like I had recommended to Ilya, sometimes even just drinking something carbonated uh, is really helpful. Uh, that's that's a good way to kind of feel like you're full, even though you you know you're technic you're technically not. Now, if you're talking about the other empty, where you just feel like everything's just awful and um, you know everything sucks because you can't eat. That's that's a whole different uh, kind of question, and again, that's where the whole mind game comes into play. I'm thinking about it because it's not it's not an easy uh, question to answer. So for me, to for for a long time, especially when I was a lot heavier, right? When I was two twenty, uh, and even before that, when I weighed even more than that, uh, a lot of it was depressing because. I just could not, I always felt like no matter how long I do this for, I'm never going to get to the point of like being average weight or feeling normal. Um, So for me, especially when I first started, before I got to this point where I'm at now, is I always had my eyes on the prize. Uh, A lot of it was emotional. I would hang small clothes up that I used to own and I would try them on and uh, I would see how tight they were on me and I would use that as a measuring stick uh, to tell myself hey like this doesn't fit just yet but it will that that's one of the ways that motivated me um, I had pictures of myself when I was you know skinnier at the time or I would look at pictures when I was really overweight and I didn't real, you know, I didn't feel secure or happy about myself, and that was a motivator as well. Um, and like, yeah, I I use the scale as as a way to push myself. You know, uh, I don't recommend that because the scale is the number one. <laughs> excuse me for saying this. It is the number one absolute fucking liar in the world. I hate the scale. I hate it. I hate that I am so obsessed with it. I made a video about it and I still am. I I know better and I know that it's just a number that like fluctuates because of water retention, but I hate it because I rely on it and I use that as my true, true indicator, even though I know it isn't, uh, as like whether or not I'm doing good or bad. And I know I shouldn't do that. Um, But I, I, yeah, um... Those are, I, I believe those are the things that motivate me. I I guess I, I also just picture myself getting to a certain weight, um, you know, sometime down the road. Like I'm, you know, I'm finally going to get there one day. I don't know when that day, you know, is. But uh, it's, it's also something that I now tell myself that this is, it's a lifelong process, right? Um I couldn't have predicted that I would lose weight this quickly, but I also know that it, it is a marathon. Uh, consistency is more important than anything else. Losing 20 pounds in a month, uh, while that might seem great, I think the bigger accomplishment is me saying that I've been doing this for now close to nine months. I think that's a bigger accomplishment than losing a ton of weight in a month because it's something that I've been able to stick to and something I'm really proud of. This is the longest I've ever gone uh, losing weight, staying healthy, and being consistent is the answer for me. Ava, I know that probably doesn't answer all the questions there, but I'm happy to kind of maybe, you know, reflect on this again in the future. But if it's helpful, um, I hope that I kind of at least put an insight or two that uh, might help you with it. Uh, you know, I will say too, another way to stay motivated is to stay accountable. Find a partner, find somebody that you can talk to about it, find somebody that's doing it, that you can do it with. That's what I'm here for. Do it with me. Talk to me. Uh, I try to talk to everybody about it. So please feel free to reach out. Um, I know I can't reach out to everybody but I try to reply to everyone in the comments. So feel free to reply when I reply back to you because I'll still reply back to all of you guys um, and we can go from there. So finally, uh, this is Ivan's and I actually replied to Ivan and I don't remember everything I said there, but uh, Ivan's comment really got to me because this was me for a long time, was that feeling of like being depressed that I was, 
let me read it again. Um, and I won't read the, the entire thing, but he's talking about like, even though he's not hungry, um, you know, how nice it would be to cook dinner with uh, his girlfriend or taking her out, pleasant memories related to, you know, food. Um, and how does one overcome that without feeling a bit depressed? And, uh, I, you know what? Maybe the best way to say it is over time, food won't be as important in that kind of regard. You won't look at food the same way after you start fasting uh, more consistently. And 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 again, that's where consistency plays a key because food, and, and I think I might've said that, food will always be there. You might fast, like right now, I'm talking to you and I don't know, actually, let me check really quick. What, what I'm trying to say is doesn't matter whether or not you're fasting for three days or a day or seven days, the food isn't going anywhere. It's always going to be there. Um, right now, I'm. Uh, you probably can't see it from here, but I'm 66 hours in. Uh, and I, I don't worry about the food today because I know that I'm breaking my fast tomorrow. Wait, what's today? Yeah, I'm breaking my fast tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just making sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, the one thing that I do too, uh, Ivan, is if I know there's a social event or a social gathering or something, or people are going out to a bar and I want to have a drink, instead of missing out, what I will do is I will fast the day before. Because a lot of us, we're not partying every day. What I'm trying to say is uh, sometimes you want to schedule or time things with you know, other events that are happening so you don't feel left out or you don't feel depressed. Because... One of the best days to fast, and I tell this to a lot of people, are Mondays. Mondays is when the weekend's over, people are going back to work, uh, people aren't really going out, you know, they're just trying to get through the work day, and uh, that's one of the best times to have a good uh, fast and have that continue into a Tuesday or whatever. Again, the beauty about fasting is you can make it work within your schedule, and that flexibility is something that I feel like isn't allowable in a lot of other kind of ways of eating or diets or whatever you want to call it. I hate calling it a diet at this point because what I do is that is my way of eating. This is how I live my life. Uh, and the way I live my life is not depriving myself of food. Yes, I don't eat on certain days, but when I eat, I eat and I eat what I want and I eat how much I want and I am not apologetic about it because I lose weight. The results are there and, um, you know, Nobody can tell me otherwise because I am a living, walking example of uh, what is possible in the method that I lose weight. Um, Ivan, I, I know it's tough and I've been there for everybody who's asked these questions. I Before I started doing YouTube, I don't even remember telling anybody except one or two people that I worked with that I was fasting the way I did. A lot of this was just me doing it on my own. Um, you know, like hanging up like old clothes that I would eventually wear. Uh, and then I guess I have to add on to that is picturing myself wearing it comfortably. And like even with this shirt, like being able to uh, button the top button, that is a non-scale victory. And that's something that you guys should uh, also keep in mind are have non-scale victories, have victories that you don't have to rely on the goddamn scale for, because I hate that thing. Um, but yeah, Ivan, I, I know that and, and, and everybody else, it might not answer all the questions, but I hope this has been helpful. I hope it kind of just, you know, sheds a light onto what you could be doing, what what could be at that end of that road, because I'm not even at that end of the road. And even when I hit goal weight or body fat percentage, then there is the whole issue of maintenance. And that's something that I, I just want to keep sharing with everybody because I feel like there are some people who are stuck and they don't know where to go or how to keep losing that weight. And uh, I just, I've been doing, I, I've been in that situation for far longer than I really wanted to be. And I was in a place where I didn't want to be, like in a really depressed state. And um, my, my life has just been different since uh, extended fasting. All right, guys, before I close this out, I want to take a minute here I know there were a couple people that asked me about Patreon, about donating, and uh, I, I do want to thank you guys for asking. And I actually set up a Patreon not too long ago. I just never marketed it 
I never marketed it because I just felt like it was too early at this point. But um, some of you have been reaching out and, uh, you know, I, I do have one. So if any of you are interested, uh, and please, it's not an obligation, but it, you know, it's a way to support me. Um, it's, it's a way to keep motivating me as well to keep doing these videos. Uh, I had a couple people show up on my other channel today while I was streaming who found me through this channel. So for those that came in, thank you so much. Uh, it's very nice of you to, to follow me on other social medias. But uh, really quick, my Patreon is patreon.com forward slash finally fasting. I'll put a link in the description. But I also want to thank uh, two people who already joined my Patreon. Uh, I have the names here, so give me one second. Yeah. So, uh, Joy Chukwudi. Joy, uh, I, I know that uh, we have talked, but thank you so much for um, supporting me on Patreon. Joy, again, I just wanted to say thank you um, for encouraging me and, and hopefully being an encouragement and an inspiration to you. But also, I wanted to thank Tim Schumann for also being a new Patreon member. Uh, Tim, thank you so much. Uh, Tim had found me on my live stream and uh, ended up joining my Patreon, and I think he joined my other Patreon. But uh, Tim, thank you so much. Um, we'll talk. I know you had emailed me, and I will reach out to you as well. Uh, and again, for anybody else, if you were interested, uh, please feel free to take a look at the Patreon. I, I had just started it, so I haven't even really put benefits and all that kind of stuff there. But if you want to support in any way, I, I do appreciate it. Uh, if you can't support in that way too, I mean, just watching the videos and liking or even being a subscriber uh, means so much to me. Um, the channel has grown a lot quicker than I thought it would. You know, it's only been two months and, um, you know, I'm over 400 subscribers and uh, I... I Thank you guys for the support. I hope that whatever info I've been sharing with you guys has been helpful and uh, I will continue to do so uh, in the future. But um, that's it for Triple Fact. Uh, I do plan to put these segments in in between episodes of Breakfast, which by the way, I am breaking another fast tomorrow. Um, but I won't go into those details. You guys will have to watch those episodes. Otherwise, uh, thanks for stopping by. I will see you whenever the next video is, probably tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.